Halo Infinite Pro players Spartan find over $3,000 for speaking their mind about Halo. Episode 8 of the Halo TV show comes up with, well, interesting reviews. Bethesda's most anticipated game gets delayed. Apex Legends goes mobile, an insane Call of Duty event happening with Godzilla and King Kong involved with it. So do you want to know more? Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So that we're all on the same page, and if you guys have been out of the loop for the last few days or so, Spartan, pro player for Halo Infinite, has been fined over $3,000 for his comments about Halo Infinite. Which is quite insane to think about, that basically he's speaking his mind about Halo Infinite and the state of the game right there, but he's doing it in a way that's not the most constructive way to go about doing it. And Tashi, the head of HCS at 343, goes into a bit of an explanation about why Spartan was fine. Now they are partner teams, they are contracted underneath Halo and their organizations, so there's some clauses tied to their contracts. Now, he does state right here, Tashi says that like, you know, plenty of players out here have tweeted against you know some of the changes when it comes to season two but in a more constructive manner and the way spartan was doing it dropping some f-bombs calling out other players saying that like you know they're worse at halo than at, you know other players and stuff like that not the really best way to go about doing it and tashi does a great job of kind of explaining the whole situation that's going on with spartan and his egregious fines that he's getting like that's a good amount that's a good chunk of change that he's lost because of what he said on twitter essentially Tashi stating specifically that it goes against their code of conduct for pros and partner teams in an unprofessional destructive way which honestly i would agree with his statements and even spartan's organization e united also find him for what he said so it's not just 343 it's also his partnered organization that also finds Spartan for what he said, because I mean, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, I talked about this in my previous video, like it's kind of like going to work, walking in and saying that everyone's doing a shit job, you're all terrible at your job, and then going like, Jim, you over in accounting, you're the worst goddamn accountant I've ever seen. Like that's the kind of stuff that Spartan did. And so you can't really do that. Most places you get completely fired. And here it's a little different. You know, you just get a fine, but a hefty chunk at that. Even the general manager of E United came out and said something on Twitter as well, basically echoing the same thing that as they appreciate his passion for the game, but he did it kind of in a constructive way in a way that you don't really want to condone yourself online so kind of falls in line with their finding and the reasoning behind it and on twitter spartan strip says that he's been fined three thousand two hundred and fifty dollars over the things he said on twitter which is like I, i'm glad he's in a situation where you can lose three thousand dollars and feel totally fine about it if i lost three thousand dollars I'd be kind of losing my mind. And he even broke it down here saying that he was fined 2,500 from 343 and 750 from E United. Again, like we're kind of saying earlier, that like there is a way to provide feedback and criticisms for the game. I mean, we've seen plenty of pros online talking about the state of Halo Infinite and saying like it's not in a good state. And honestly, I would agree, like, especially with that weapon jamming issue that happening with the battle rifle and multiple other weapons within Halo Infinite. That's really unacceptable for a first person shooter for that to kind of stuff to happen. But the thing is, these other pro players, especially Luce, has been very vocal online as well basically saying that like you know you can voice your opinions you can voice things you don't like about the game but you have to say in a well you know polite manner not to be like oh you have to say all the nice words to us because we're fragile at 343 it's more just like you can't be rude crass and deconstructive with your comments there's a difference between constructive feedback and toxicity and spartan was certainly leaning more towards the toxicity side of things that made him lose over three thousand dollars for what he said on twitter episode eight of the halo tv show is live right now now i didn't get a chance to see it mainly because palmcast internet went dead for me last night so i didn't get a chance to really watch it uh but i definitely will be releasing my own review about it because some people have some big opinions about this episode some things apparently get a little steamy Master Chief. But again, I have to watch the episode. I'll have a full review coming out later this week about it, so make sure you subscribe to the channel to catch that video when it does go live. In some other gaming news, the big drop today, I'm sure it's going to be going around the internet as a whole, is that Starfield and Redfall from Bethesda, the most anticipated games probably of this year, most likely, are being delayed until the first half of 2023. Now in this post right here, Bethesda doesn't give any explanations of why they're delaying the game. I'm sure it's just saying just to meet their vision and ambitions of the game is why they're looking to do some more polishing of the games themselves. Kind of like the same thing we have with like Halo Infinite, right? 
But uh, this delay looks to be about six months of a delay, maybe four months, something like that. It's not huge. Uh, but of course, this is subject to change potentially, like we saw with the release of Cyberpunk, where there was a lot of issues going on with that game. Like they, I think they delayed it to about almost a year's worth of delay when it came to that game. And also when it released, not in the best state either. I guess we'll have to wait and see how the pandemic kind of affects the development of Starfield because it literally happened in the middle of it. Obviously not the mo most crucial time with like one year left in development like we had with Halo Infinite. Certainly saw the effects of it on that game. But certainly as a single player focused game like Starfield, you need to hit it off right at the first bat because the things that were happening like with Cyberpunk, right? Took about a year. I've heard things have been getting pretty good with that game recently, but I feel like a lot of interest in the game hasn't really been there because of the launch was so, being so terrible. I certainly do expect to hear more information about Starfield, probably get some gameplay and some actual details and probably some gameplay footage of this year for June, which is going to be next month, guys, as the big game announcements typically happen. With the recent delay now to early 2023, we're effectively about eight months away from the release of the game, maybe less than 12 months. And so we'll start seeing some actual footage of it. So I'm definitely excited about that for sure. We'll see what happens with Starfield. I'll definitely keep you guys up to date as soon as we get some more information on that. Apex Legends is going mobile. I'm sure many of you guys have heard this, but they actually have the release date now of May 17th. You'll be able to play Apex Legends on mobile and you can register for android or ios as well you can jump in and play that we also have the minimum recommended specs when it comes to your phone so if you want to check it out guys pause the video right here if you want to see exactly where the stats line up for you when it comes to be able to play apex legends on your mobile phone also saying that the game will launch with 10 legends and it's also built from the ground up to be on mobile as well it comes with classic world's edge and king's canyon maps rank play and mobile exclusive modes and apparently the 10th legend going to be part of the mobile version is going to be a mobile exclusive so if you guys have been interested in playing some apex legends on your phone now's the chance to do it with the nine known legends being all the classic ones like gibraltar caustic life flying bangalore mirage pathfinder octane wraith and also bloodhound once we get some concrete information about who that 10th legend is going to be for that mobile exclusive platform i'll let you guys know here on the channel in some other gaming news Operation Monarch for Call of Duty Warzone has gone live and this event just looks to be absolutely insane. It pits you against King Kong, Godzilla, and the other teams on the map to have you be the last team standing. Uh, this also comes with its own like event pass and also kind of unique kind of things you can buy for customization and things like that. So it's a whole event type of thing. This actually is just like out of like, I would never expect to see this happen in a Call of Duty game, but it's quite crazy to think about. Now this Godzilla King Kong mode, it's gonna be its own thing. It has its own unique mechanics and the developer is going to explain exactly how the whole thing plays out. This limited time mode pits 15 teams of four with a resurgence rule set on Caldera. Players drop in and they will be introduced to a Titan frenzy right away. The action starts really hot. Players opt in to fight either Kong or Godzilla to get rewards that will give them a massive advantage for the rest of the match. Players that do the most damage will get the Monarch Scream device. Players can use the Monarch Scream device to direct a Titan's wrath against other squads. After the Titan Frenzy ends, Titans will begin to patrol the island. Now players can continue to do combat against them, or they can go ahead and scavenge around the island and look for Monarch intel in other ways. True to a proper Battle Royale experience, and despite the presence of the Titans, players are still fighting to be the last squad standing. When it comes to fighting King Kong, when it comes to fighting Godzilla and other players, well, this is Call of Duty's reaction. Let them fight. So yeah, you're playing against King Kong, Godzilla, and other players in a specific mode in Call of Duty Caldera right now, which is kind of crazy to think about. Of course, it's so authentic for your World War II game to be my team versus Giant Monkey and Lizard Man. But hey, you know, this is where we're at right now when it comes to Call of Duty. This is actually a spark of interest. I've actually updated Call of Duty, and I think I might actually jump in and play a little because this just looks too crazy to just not jump in and just experience at least one time through. This event runs until May 25th, so you have some time to jump in and experience the craziness of fighting against these gigantic titans. But if you're new to the channel or missing any content from your recently, check out this playlist right here. I'm going to link to all my gaming news and informational videos right there. Thanks so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.